In this segment, we're going to talk about how to optimize things. And this is going to introduce this concept of optimization that's going to come up going forward throughout the course. Now, this is not a course on optimization, so this is going to be an extremely abbreviated treatment. Um, there's a lot more there to unpack, but we're just going to look at what we need to understand what we want to do in NLP. Um, so the basic idea um, of optimization is that we have some kind of loss function, and we are finding a setting of weights w to minimize that loss. So this is, we could think of as a search over the space of parameters w. And again, our loss, um, which it, we're going to start writing as uh, this script L here, um, is defined with respect to a training set like this. Uh, and uh, with respect to a training set and also our weight vector. And what we said was that all of the loss functions we're going to look at, um, basically, we are going to think of as uh, this linear sum over the training examples. And so what we're thinking about this uh, uh, right now as is as a function of w, right? So we're searching for a w that's going to minimize this thing. And so we kind of treat the training data uh, we're going to treat the training data as fixed, and w is uh, sort of the variable that we're going to be changing to try to find a good value of this loss function. Um, so, so in stochastic gradient descent, the idea was we uh, repeatedly pick an example i and then apply this update. OK, and so I'm abbreviating here. Uh, this is loss on ith example. Um, I will put in uh, I will put in w here just to make that extra clear. So we pick an example i. We compute the gradient of uh, the loss on that example with respect to the weights, and then we subtract off alpha times that. And again, because we're minimizing things, um, subtracting the gradient is the way to kind of go in the right direction. So the part that we haven't kind of talked about how to deal with, and which is what makes this whole process pretty tricky, is the step size. So let's see a little example of why step size matters. So suppose this equals w squared, um, and there's just one feature here. So again, basically, uh, w is just a single uh, a vector with a single coordinate w in it. Um, and let's suppose further that uh, w equals minus 1 is, is sort of our initial starting point here. Um, OK, so the gradient of L with respect to w uh, is just 2w. All right, so now the minimum value of w here uh, is, is 0. This is, a, this is a quadratic function, right? I guess I'll just draw that little cartoon here. Um, and what happens with SGD if alpha equals 1? So let's apply this. So uh, we have our weight, current weight w, which we said is minus 1. And then we subtract off alpha, which is 1, times 
the gradient, which is 2w, which is uh, 2 times minus 1. Um, and so that gives us an updated value of w, which is equal to, to 1 now. So what happened was we started out here, and the gradient uh, kind of told us to go towards the origin. And then what we did was we ended up over here. And if, uh, if you keep alpha equal to 1, what happens is that this oscillates. This will never converge to the true minimum, which is at w equals 0. Instead, it just kind of bounces back and forth here. Instead, if alpha equals a half, um, you should be able to convince yourself that w uh, you know, kind of immediately jumps to the right answer uh, of 0. And so even with the same gradient as before, the fact that we had a step size, now the, the kind of correct step size allowed us to get to the optimum. So that kind of indicates how important the step size parameter might be in that uh, you know, it makes the difference between not converging and converging um, with the same algorithm. Uh, OK, so how to choose step size? Uh, I mean, it's, it's not much of an exaggeration to say that there's um, you know, hundreds of papers published at NeurIPS or ICML, which um, basically kind of amount to this question from an optimization standpoint. Uh, so the answers from the perspective of SGD are going to be the following. Um, try them out. Uh, so, you know, we, we, a lot of times maybe we want to try uh, just a range of different orders of magnitude. Um, if you don't know too much about uh, the function that you're optimizing, you're not even really sure what scale you should be searching on here. Um, and a lot of neural models you need pretty small step sizes, for example, uh, you know, 1e minus 4, 1e minus 5, things like that, depending on how big the model is. Um, another thing that's pretty common um, is to start with a larger step size and go to a smaller step size. Um, so, uh, so something like 1 over t um, for epoch t, um, or 1 over the square root of t, something like that. Um, similar, so, so that's kind of a fixed schedule. Um, or you can decrease step size when uh, performance stagnates. On held out data. Um, so you basically kind of, you know, look, look at when you're no longer making progress on your validation set, um, or a development set, uh, both terms get used. And then you you turn down the step size. Okay, so these are, these are sort of course techniques, and it's a little bit hard to find uh, exactly the right, uh, the right value for this thing. And it's actually not even clear that this is the right way to go about it, because what it does is it treats all of the positions of your weight vector equally. Um, but not all the positions of your weight vector are equal um, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, when you're dealing with neural nets, they might reflect different kind of layers of the architecture that might have very different sizes or different behavior. Um, and when you're dealing with feature-based models, they can reflect different, like, you know, one might be a very common feature, like, uh, 
you know, a bag of words feature on said or a common word like that um, versus, you know, a feature that occurs one time in your entire training data because it's someone's name. So what we want to do is we want to be a little bit smarter about this. Um, so we're not going to discuss it in too much detail, um, but the, the kind of smarter thing to do here um, is something called Newton's method. Um, OK, so uh, basically, this is something called the inverse Hessian. Um, and the idea here is that we use the curvature of the space to, to uh, uh, or of the objective function to figure out what the right step size is. Um, and so one way to think about this is it's like a second order Taylor approximation where uh, if you are optimizing a quadratic, what this will allow you to do is it'll allow you to take uh, your gradient, which is kind of locally going uphill on the quadratic, and it'll tell you, okay, you know, based on the gradient here and the, the kind of second derivative, the curvature, like we, we can immediately jump to uh, the optimum here. Um, the problem is that this is, this is very expensive to compute. Um, it's quadratic in the number of features, and so in big neural models or even in uh, linear models, which are going to have, you know, once you start to get into hundreds of thousands of features, um, it starts to become, you know, totally infeasible to do this. Um, so there's a whole bunch of methods uh, at a grad, at a delta. Adam, uh, these are uh, so-called adaptive methods. And a lot of them are motivated as approximations to the inverse Hessian. Um, but they're, but they're going to be linear. in the number of features. So these are going to be techniques that are kind of useful for deep learning. And we're not going to talk about them a ton. Um, but Adam is definitely one uh, that we are going to revisit when we get to deep learning. And so we're going to talk about, uh, you know, we're going to talk about it and its hyperparameters a little bit more there. Um, and the last thing I'll say about optimization before we close out is, uh, on the subject of regularization. Um, which we, I'm going to say, don't really use. Um, so in classical statistics, what we would say is that actually fully optimizing the value of the loss is bad. Um, there's this notion of a bias variance trade-off where what we want to do is not actually fully optimize it, and in doing so, reduce the kind of variance of our estimator and do better on new data. Uh, the idea of regularization is useful, but we're typically not going to explicitly add in regularization to our objective. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to benefit from uh, either early stopping, just not running as many iterations. Um, the fact that our optimization is not going to be perfect at, at optimizing this function, um, and other kind of ad hoc tricks for deep learning, uh, things like dropout that are going to allow us to uh, get the same benefits of regularization in terms of not overfitting the data without explicitly incorporating it. So uh, the, the kind of main thing you'll need to know for the first portion of this course is simply the step size and the fact that these kind of different optimization techniques exist. Uh, and then we'll revisit some of these concepts when we come to uh, optimization and deep learning later. That's it for this segment.